Hello and welcome to Season 7, Episode 6 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kev, and coming up on today's episode, we've got live comms at home to Rotherham and then at home to Middlesbrough um, in the Championship. But before we get into all that transfer news, the window is closed and we've sold Andre Dazelle for loads of money. Uh, bearing in mind, his contract is up at the end of this season. He was refusing to sign a new one. I didn't really have any choice but to sell him. Um, loads of clubs were in for him. In the end, he's gone to Newcastle uh, for £6.75 million. Pounds. We've got £6 million pounds of that up front as a lump sum. Um, there's clauses on it that could take it as high as £7.5 million. Um, we're getting a little bit of money over the, over the course of a year, I think it is. Um, there's some sell-ons. There's clauses for whether or not he plays for England. Um, number of appearances, number of games, that kind of thing. But, you know, a deal that could eventually rise to £7.5 million for a championship midfielder who's out of contract in a few months' time, I don't care how good he is, that's a good deal. So we've got some money to spend. Um, straight away, um, I had a replacement in mind for him. Not been able to bring him in permanently. Rune Rowe, I think that's how you say it, or Rune Rowe, maybe. Um, he's 20 years old. He's coming on loan from Southampton until the end of the season. Um, and looking at him, I think he's probably as good as Andre Dezel already. Um, he's just coming in as a like-for-like -like replacement. Um, he can play in the same positions as Dezel. Um, he's left-footed in the same way as Dezel was. So I'd like to think... The squad hasn't been weakened at all by Dazelle going. Um, it's not costing us anything to have Rowe at the club. Um, so at least until the end of the season, we have a solution for the problem. And then we can review things in the summer, see where we are. Depends what division we're in and how much money we've got to spend. And we can look at bringing in a proper long-term replacement. But to me, this seems like good business. Um, first game after he left, um, we were at home to Hull. We won 2-0. Um, goals from Thierry Ambrose and Tommy Orr. Played pretty well, pretty happy with that one. Um, not so happy with this one. Um, we drew 0-0 with Swindon at home. Didn't play particularly well. And then we started spending some money. We finally have a goalkeeper. Um, Danny Sotres, I guess that's how you say it. Um, a former Spain under-21 international. He's come in from Leeds for just under £2.5 million. Pounds. Um, they signed him from Liverpool three years ago. Um, he's been playing regularly for Leeds in the Championship for the last three seasons. Um and he's just a, a proper championship goalkeeper who's ready now. Um, still think the long-term solution is going to be Mika, but he's still only 20. It's going to take him time to get to the point where he's ready to be a regular first-teamer for us. So he'll just drop back down to being our backup goalkeeper again. It means Martino can go back on loan to Leicester. Um, and we finally, 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 after a year and a half of looking, have a, have a decent championship-level goalkeeper. Um, his debut, though... Uh, we can see the other couple of goals. Um, we went away to Watford, drew 2-2. It wasn't a complete disaster. Um, Watford are a decent-ish side. Um, and it was nice to see us score a couple of goals playing the defensive version of our tactic. Um, this wasn't so good. We went away to Charlton, lost 1-0. Didn't play very well. Didn't really look like scoring any goals either. It's pretty clear we need something a little bit more going forward. Um, so I've signed some more players as well, spent a bit more money. Um, this guy I am quite excited about, Pedro Antonio Gomez. Um, he's a Colombian. We only just managed to get his uh, work permit through in time. So we had another option as well who I've also signed. I'll show you in a second. But he's 20 years old. He's cost us £2.7 million. Pounds. Um, he can play as an attacking midfielder, as a striker, as a central midfield player. Um, bags of potential should be good enough to at least be in our first team squad now but he's young lots of potential um, and joins the growing number of very exciting young prospects that we've got at Ipswich um, we also signed Johnny Vaughan not the radio guy I don't think um, he's been labelled the next Paul Gascoigne he comes on loan from Man United until the end of the season he's only 18 can also play as an attacking midfielder central midfielder or striker um, and between the two of them, um, the two youngsters who've come in, we should have a few more options in a, in more attacking positions, a little bit more creativity going forward and a bit more strength in depth um, in the more attacking version of our system. So hopefully some goals will come. This was the roundup of the transfer window. Obviously lots and lots of money spent in the championship. Again, £72 million in this transfer window. Andre Dazelle was the big move going to Newcastle. And he's played every game for Newcastle since he went there as well. He was just too good for us. Um, Leeds have also sold a midfielder to Villa. 
Um, and Rotherham have spent £4.2 million on a striker. In fact, Rotherham spent £28.5 million this window. They did come down from the Premier League. Um, they were there last season. So they've got money to spend. They've bought 10 players. So that's a bit ominous. Um, and you can see on the major failed transfers, Oldham, after failing to sign Kala from us, came back in with bid after bid after bid for Dominic Ball. They really want him. And unfortunately, our injuries stopped me selling him. I probably would have let him go if we weren't having our fullback crisis. But Ball has already spent time covering at right back this season. Um, he's now spending some time covering at left back um, because both our left backs are injured. Um, so... We kind of needed to keep him around, but £2.3 million for him was a lot of money. Uh, so it was it, it was a difficult one, and I kind of had to force myself to turn it down because we're probably going to need him um, as the season goes on. Um, in the Premier League, £340 million spent there. Man United spent a load of money on a striker. Arsenal bought an expensive winger. And Jack Butland went from Bournemouth to Man City for loads of money. Um, Arsenal spent £48.5 million in that window, so obviously signed a few players. Um, and as we stand at the moment, my position is stable. The board are satisfied. Um, they still like Stefano Milani. He's third choice keeper now and he's injured, so he's never going to play for us again. And I don't understand how they're disappointed with the number of young first team players we're signing. They asked me to sign lots of them. That's my lowest bar on club, the club philosophies one. All I'm signing is young players. What, what else am I supposed to do? Am I signing too many? I don't see how I can be. That's what they asked me to sign. I'm, I'm confused. Um, and luckily, um, Delanley wasn't very happy when Dezel got sold, but he's clearly happy with the players we brought in to replace him. Um, we only lost the one player. Well, we lost Hector as well, but he hadn't been in the side all season. So we effectively only lost one first team player um, and we've brought in three to replace him. So or four even. I forgot about Rowe. Um, so I think that's probably pretty good business. And if we don't have a good playoff push now, I'm going to start to worry about how realistic it's going to be to make that happen at Ipswich. So that's the, that's the state of the league at the moment. We're, we're just outside where we need to be. I think that's a, a decent enough position to be in at this stage of the season. We're only two points outside of the playoffs. Automatic promotion isn't on the cards. We're 12 points behind Fulham in second place. So we're not going to get distracted by hopes of automatic promotion this year. Full on focus is get into the playoffs and get up that way. Um, so that's got to be the goal for us. So, first of the two live comms is at home to Rotherham. Big spending Rotherham. They've obviously thrown a load of money around and I guess that can go one of two ways. I've signed 10 players. They could suddenly turn into a brilliant side and stuff us today. Or they could be struggling to, to put a settled team out. Lots of players getting to know each other. And that could work in our favour. But this is our new look side. So we've got Danny Sotres in goal. Um, and then a back four of Joshua Emmanuel at right back, Dominic Ball at left back, and then Dane and Zaman as our two centre backs. In central midfield, we've got um, Lassavig and Christensen and new boy Rune Rowe. Um, and then the three players behind Thierry Ambrose, as usual, Tommy Orr, Sebastian Kirk and Jan-Eric Delanley. Although obviously we've got um, the two new players, Vaughan and Gomez, both sat there on the bench. Um, they've only just signed a couple of days ago, so I don't want to throw them straight in yet. But... Sebastian Kirk needs to very much be looking over his shoulder um, because his place is under threat by both of those new players. Um, we've also got Mika back on the bench now. Kala is there as well. And then Cole Scuse, Amir Hughes and Keziah Sterling fill up the bench. Encouragingly, James Tavernier is now in training again. He's not yet fit to play, but he should be back in time for the next episode at least. Um, Arba Kraj is also coming back from injury. Um, so we're starting to get something resembling a, uh, a proper squad again. So kind of need to start getting a good run of form together and winning some games. So fingers crossed, eh? So we'll give some squad numbers to the two new boys. Um, I did forget the other business we did... Um, in the transfer window. Um, the young striker I signed last transfer window. What was his name? I can't remember his name. Um, I need to look him up. That's that's awful. How can I not remember one of my promising youngsters' names? Let's... Oh, you're probably shouting it at me. And I, Why can't I remember his name? Let's have a look. Look him up. Bottom line, he's gone on loan somewhere. Um, but I forget where he's gone. Um, but he wasn't getting first team football for us. So we've let him go out on loan. Will you just let me look at my squad? What is going on? Why didn't I just take this screenshot? Uh, where is he? Yeah, Miraglia has gone on loan to split um, until the end of the season. 
I still think he's got the potential to be an excellent player for us. It's not really happened for him so far. Um, 24 games for us now and only two goals. Not a particularly good average rating. He can go out there, hopefully play some first-team football in Croatia for the rest of the season and come back next season and start pushing for a first-team spot again. He's still very young, um, still only 20 years old, still lots and lots of potential. So him and Gomez particularly, very bright futures at the club. So... Um, don't worry, I've not forgotten about him. I do intend to use him. He just won't be used for the rest of this season. Um, we're building for the future at Ipswich, so I guess I'm going to be sticking around. I'm enjoying it at this club. Um, let's carry on enjoying it by getting a good result today. I'll soon stop enjoying it if we lose both of these live comms, because um, that'll just make me grumpy. The curse of the live com seems to be striking too often at the moment. So we've hopefully got a chance here. Christensen finds Emmanuel. Can he get the cross? And he finds Delanley. Can anyone get it into Thierry Ambrose? Emmanuel now... And Kirk knows he's, uh, his days in the first team are numbered and he's weighed in with his first goal of the season. Does well to get on the end of that, actually. And, you know, if signing the two new lads makes him play like a superstar for the rest of the season, I don't mind having Gomez sat on the bench. Um, he'll come good next season and having him and Miraglia both sort of breaking through into the side at the same time is not going to be a bad thing at all. Um, and in the meantime, we've got Kirk there to carry on doing the the good job he's been doing since we've moved him into the middle and was that our new two and a half million pound goalkeeper being a complete muppet what has even happened there why do i bother with goalkeepers we might as well just stop playing with them um oh dear oh dear oh dear two and a half million pounds there Micka is sat on the bench laughing probably and if it was if i was him i'd be asking why can't I play? Why did you spend all that money on that joker? He was only at Leeds. That should have told you something. The Premier League clubs weren't beating down the door for this 28-year-old. Oh, what have I done? Oh, well, we've still got Mika hanging around if the new guy doesn't turn out to be any good. Um, most worrying at the moment is the fact we've got Dominic Ball at left-back. Um, hopefully it's not going to be a long-term thing. Um, we have got the young lad Phillips from Liverpool. But he seems to be taking an absolute age to retrain as a fullback. I suppose I could play him there anyway. His natural position is wing back. So I could just stick him at fullback, and that'll probably make it quicker and easier for him to train as well. Ambrose has just scored an absolute beauty of an individual goal. You need to see the replay of this one. This is fantastic. Look, he picks it out deep, deep back in the half, out on the wing, and just, I mean. He was just aiming for goal there, beeline, straight into the penalty area, thumps it in. That's a man in a lot of confidence. 17th goal of the season. We're only in February. If he doesn't end up as top scorer in the championship this season, it can surely only be because he picks up an injury or something, because he is in excellent form. And I kind of think if we don't go up this season, I don't expect him to be hanging around next year. He has just signed a five-year contract with us, which is fantastic news. Um, so... If if we don't go up and he wants to leave, we I'd be expecting ten million plus for him, I'd like to think. But in the meantime, he's just gonna keep banging in the goals for us. So, two one up at half time. Looking good so far. And um, it's been a fairly even match actually, looking at the stats, fairly even for possession and shots. We've had the one clear cut chance. Looking at the average ratings though, we're playing much better than Rotherham are. Um individually at least, if it even if it's not showing on the uh on the team stats but they've got the ball here and this is looking threatening and this is a worry and Sotrez does well there probably need a new name for him because I cannot pronounce it properly is it Sotrez? Sotas? So let me know in the comments how we say his name because um, oh, I can't handle these these names they confuse me too much right Tommy Orr now beats his man gets the cross in and Jan-Eric Delanley is there at the far post to tuck it away it's his eighth goal of the season now he's had a great season um, and we are 3-1 up against Big Spending Oldham. Oldham? No, Big Spending Rotherham. Oldham has spent a lot of money too. They're probably coming up, by the way. A couple of people have asked in the comments how Oldham are doing. They've spent about £30 million in League One, and they were second last time I looked, um, so I would expect them to get promoted. They spent a lot of money again in the transfer window. Um, oh, I've let them get a goal back there. We're so weak at the back really haven't solved this defensive problem at all and I guess part of the problem is the way we are set up to be so attacking especially when we're at home but you've got to put that down as poor goalkeeping again I mean that's that's pretty much straight at him it's a worry he needs to he needs to get settled in and fast 
because we've spent all that money because I wanted a safe pair of hands at the back to so we didn't have to worry about that kind of thing happening anymore. So, uh, yeah, that's not ideal. Right, we're going to have a tactical tweak here. Uh, we, no, we're not. We're at home. I don't want to tactically tweak. I was tempted to go to the away formation, but with 20 minutes to go, we're just asking for them to attack at us. And I don't think that's the best idea. So we're going to take Ro, uh, Ro off and bring Emir Hughes on. I'll just swap him and Christensen around. Um, and then I think I'm going to bring on Gomez for Kirk. Just have a look at him. Makes his debut. What does he want to be? He wants to be an attacking midfielder. And I would hate to disappoint. So he can be an attacking midfielder. Um, reduces the number of playmakers we've got. Which is probably not a bad thing. Because we probably don't need three playmakers in the middle of the park. Um, my understanding is an attacking midfielder is a bit more direct. Let's take this down to standard rather than control. We don't want to go too defensive. Yet. But at the same time. We don't need to be bombing forward when we're a goal up with just over 10 minutes to go. We do need to win the ball back here, though. This isn't looking good because they are just slicing through us again. We're so porous defensively um, and we just need to get the ball clear. We've got so much talent going forward and we just don't back it up correctly with our defenders. But the Lanley's potentially free here. He's beaten two men. This is a fantastic run. What a cross. And is that an Ambrose goal? That's gone down as an own goal. But the two star men of the day combining again. The Lanley beating. I mean, he's nearly 30 years old. Look at the pace he's used there. And, I mean, that's that's as bad as our the first goal we conceded. It's a day of goalkeeping calamities. I mean, it looks like it's raining. Perhaps it's a slippy ball. Perhaps we have to cut him a little bit of slack. Um, I'm not going to. And... Last substitution, I think we're going to take Tommy Orr off, bring on Kaziah Sterling. I'd hate him to think he's forgotten um, with all these new attacking players we've signed. Um, still got very high hopes for him. He's another one who's still very young. He's been here 18 months now, but still has plenty of time to fulfil his potential. It's an exciting time to be at Ipswich. Lots of very good players at the club. And... Christensen's picked up the ball in midfield, finds Sterling, he finds Ambrose, he feeds through to Gomez, who loses the ball, but finds Delanley when he wins it back. Delanley beats, beats his man again, finds Ambrose again. Those two have both had storming games. I mean, Ambrose is, is playing like a man possessed at the moment. But look at Delanley, he's just beating players for fun. He really does. I mean, <laughs> bearing in mind, he was moaning at me when Dazelle went. He's obviously really happy with the way things are going. Because, obviously, bringing in these new players has cheered him up and made him start playing like a crazy person. Uh, Michael Hector's probably not having the best fun. Obviously, he was our captain last year. He's their number 60 today, playing at centre-back for him. Um, and they've conceded five goals. So, I'm I'm calling that justification for letting him leave. Um, there could be a shout here for playing with the standard system on all the time. Because we've looked... Just as threatening as ever going forward, playing standard. But has it solidified us at the back slightly? Probably not, because again, sloppy goal to concede. I mean, if you're a defensive purist, you don't want to be winning games 5-3. However, I'm a posh fan. This is what we do in real life. Uh, <laughs> I think in real life, we're still the top scorers in the whole of England. Um, and you know what? That's how I want to play. If they're going to score three or four goals, we'll just score four or five. Um, it won't happen every week, but when it happens like that, we're sending the fans home happy. And that's a good result as far as I'm concerned. Delanley rightfully gets man of the match. And we shall fast forward on to the Middlesbrough game um, in a couple of days' time. And hopefully carry on. What? Let's hope it's the start of a good run of form and a playoff push. Right, next up then, Middlesbrough at home. Um, we're an unchanged side. Um, we are getting close to having our two... Well, two of our first choice fullbacks back. James Tavernier getting ever fitter. Uh, Masadiao Haidara um, is back in training but failed a fitness test. But he should be back in time. If not for the weekend, then for next week. So the days of Dominic Ball at fullback are hopefully coming to an end. Um, but other than that, completely unchanged side. Um, I've put Peter Phillips onto the bench just in case. Because um, I am worried about having Ball out there. But he's just, I mean, if you look at. The abilities for the role ability, Phillips just he hasn't even got a yellow star, not even half a yellow star. I don't know. He's gonna to struggle to get football anywhere unless he can find a team that play with wing backs. He's a cracking wing back. Um I mean, 
ability wise as a wing back, he's lower Premier League quality probably, but he just doesn't. I don't know. He looks like he should be able to be a fullback. If we look at his stats, I mean, what's he missing there to be a fullback? Nothing really. But for whatever reason, my assistant manager is telling me not to play him, and so I'll not play him. But I might end up regretting it. If they absolutely batter us down that left hand side today, then we'll call that my fault. Let's get into the game anyway. Middlesbrough are a much better team than Rotherham. They're up in fourth place at the moment. Um, and they are certainly much more dangerous going forward. So we have to be a little bit careful. We're starting with the, the attacking tactic on control. Um, hopefully I won't regret doing it on control rather than standard. I've toyed with the idea of putting it on standard. I mentioned it in the last game. But I don't want to change things too much when we've just won a match. So um, I guess if we get battered by Middlesbrough today, then it's maybe time for a rethink. But as it is, it's been a fairly quiet start to the game. No one's had a shot yet, although here we are, 50 minutes in. We have a highlight. Rowe plays the ball forward to Ambrose, who can't win it, but it drops to Emmanuel, who crosses in, finds Tommy Orr, and he hits the post. And that's, I mean, that's gone down as a clear-cut chance. Don't really see how it is. He was well wide of the goal. Awful angle. Um, but I guess we have to put it down as a miss. Um, Rowe now finds Kirk. Kirk brings it out to Orr. Orr's very deep here, um, but finds Kirk again. Orr back on the overlap. And he just ran too far with that. He's hit the post again, I think, and it's gone down as another clear-cut chance. It really wasn't. I don't know why he didn't square it, but Tommy Orr should have scored two goals, according to the stats. Personally, don't really fault him for missing either of them. That's a sloppy pass from Rowe, and it's led to a Middlesbrough attack, and this is their first proper attack that we've seen, and we're lucky to get away with that. That's their first clear-cut chance. It's opening up a little bit, this game. It was a a dull 15 minutes, but there's been three big chances there um, before the half hour mark. So there's going to be goals today, I think. Sotra's good save there. Another clear cut chance, though. That's two apiece now. I don't really know how this game is still nil nil. Um, there's going to be a goal in a minute, and worryingly, it's Middlesbrough who are attacking again. They've got another corner. Um, we've got the ball clear. They were only as far as their player who was hovering on the edge of the area. And, oh, it terrifies me watching us tackle back there, especially when it's Dominic Ball playing out of position. And they're attacking again. They are just camped out on the edge of our area at the moment and just passing it around for fun, waiting for space to appear. We need, And Rowe does really well to win the ball back. Finds or who can't find Ambrose, and it's coming back at us. Um, they've just got so much space, I don't understand how. They're, they're not playing with this many attacking players, but they must be playing a really fluid system. And they're in again. And that's their third clear-cut chance. That's five big chances before the half-hour mark between the two of us. How is it still nil-nil? What an odd match. Um, right, it's calmed down a little bit now, but we've got a corner. And we have scored. <laughs> I think that was... I don't really know how that was bundled across the line. I think it was a flick-on from Zaman. Dane, I think, had two goes at it. Let's have a look at it in 3D. Um, so the corner comes in from Sebastian Kirk. There's the man with the flick on. There's Dane with his first header. Comes back off the crossbar and then in off their goalkeeper. Okay. Um, why that one's gone down as a goal for Dane and the two in the last match went down as own goals that were very similar. You'd have to ask the match engine, I guess. Because that one looked as much of an own goal as the other two did. In fact, that looked more of an own goal than the one um, that was the Ambrose chance in the last game. Because it was kind of the force of the ball that took the goalkeeper over the line with it that time. But... Who am I to question these things? Where's the dubious goals panel? So, 1-0 up at half-time. This is going well. I'm, a, I'm still nervous, though. I've just got a feeling um, there's there's more goals in this game. Of the five clear-cut chances, none of them went in, and we, sc we score a dubious corner. So, there's, de there's definitely more goals in this. I just hope we get the first one of them. I'd be surprised if this finishes 1-0. Or even one all or anything like that. There's there's plenty of goals in this second half. So Kirk now can he shoot? No, he finds Ambrose and Ambrose does stick it into that bottom corner for his nineteenth goal of the season with two nil up. Hopefully that's going to be enough. I, I still don't think it is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm being really negative. I feel like Middlesbrough are going to score. They've already had three really good chances. I just don't see them not scoring. We'll just keep attacking at them. Carry on with the mentality. Come on, let's just keep attacking at them. Let's go and score another one. Ambrose is in cracking form. The wide men are in good form. Kirk's playing well again. Um, he's desperate not to lose his place. So, keep at it, lads. Let's go and get another goal. 
although it's all quietening down a bit now the stats are actually starting to skew in our direction now we've had a lot of possession our average rating is miles ahead of theirs and Ambrose is behind their last man he finds Delanley and Delanley makes it 3-0 and those two are lethal at the moment and we are playing some good football Ambrose does really well to come out of this with a the ball there's two men on him and he finds Delanley and Delanley on his weaker foot places it perfectly and that is a good goal um, right, let's make a few changes again. So firstly, we'll drop back down to standard because we're 3-0 up, there's 20 minutes left. We don't need to push it too hard and leave ourselves too overexposed. Um, Christensen can come off for Hughes. Still feel a bit sorry for Hughes that he's the man who's missed out with the change in, for in formation this season because he was brilliant last year. But what can you do? Um, and I want to take Tommy Orr off. Do I bring on Sterling? I'm tempted to bring on Gomez and move Kirk out there, actually, just because I want to carry on having a look at Gomez. Because I just have a feeling about him. I think he's going to be really good for us. So I want to give him as much game time as possible. Kirk, I mean, I signed him as a winger. He should be able to play out there. And if he can't, give it a few minutes. Sterling can come on for him. So, I ah, see Middlesbrough have got the ball. And it begins. Oh, no one... No one got the ball there on either team, but they have fit. I'll see. There we go. That's their right winger. So we'll chalk that one up against Dominic Ball. Do I go back to control now? We've been on standard for three minutes and they've scored. Hmm. I mean, look how far Fernandez is past Ball there. Ball is the guy five yards behind the player who's supposed to be marking there. Oh, come on, Hydara. We need you to be fit again. Right. Ten minutes left. Let's make our last change. Um, I might take off Delanley, actually. In fact, no, I'm going to take off Dominic Ball and give Peter Phillips a try. Hopefully won't massively regret that. But he's had nearly a year on loan at us now across the two seasons. I've not actually seen him play, I don't think. I don't remember ever giving him a game. So he's got 10 minutes not to mess up. Oh, no. They're going to score again? No. Okay. Let's just get the ball away. Oh, and that's the same man again. That's <laughs> I don't think we can blame Phillips for that one. But I am getting pretty twitchy now. Surely we're not going to throw this away. What do I do here? Do I stick with the system as it is or do I drop players back? Oh, dear. I don't like this at all. Right. We need to do this, I think. Doesn't really suit Roe or Gomez. I might even go defence. In fact, I'll go defensive for now. I might even go contain in a minute. Where's time wasting? Let's waste some time as well. Again, this is all off the back of YouTube comments. Someone suggested this to me. Go defensive, waste time, hold on to your leads. I think they said 88 minutes. Go contain. I've never, ever used contain before in Football Manager. If I concede a goal here, I'll be very upset. But there you go. Let's go contain. Fact, if I'm containing, should I drop the wingers back as well? Let's drop the wingers back as well. Let's leave Ambrose up there by himself. He's a big boy. He can look after himself. We'll do that. If they can get past that, they deserve a draw. Come on, we've got three minutes to hold on. Two minutes to hold on. One minute to hold on. Oh, that would have been disgusting. Oh, right, that's it. Waste the time. Take a book in. Just keep hold of the ball. Right, Kirk has the ball out wide. Let's see you waste some time. Phillips to row. This, I guess this is wasting time. Emmanuel, tuck it up to Delaney. There we go. Just run for the corner. Gomez to Ambrose. We're holding the ball really nicely here in Kirk. And we have held on. There you go. Back to back wins in an episode. Has that, has that happened at all this season? I don't remember it happening. Is that enough to move us into the playoff spots? We're away at Reading in just a couple of days' time as well, so this is where the whole might need to rotate the team thing comes in. But as we stand to close out the episode, we're now only one point behind Middlesbrough, who are in sixth place now. Um, it's looking good. Hopefully we can keep this run of form going. Um, if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel as well, so you don't miss out on all the upcoming episodes and thank you very much for watching